Hey there, guy. My name's Shutik. I'm taking a break from throwing rocks at my neighbor's Honda Civic today to show you this. The Empress Para EQ Mach 2. Empress has done everything in their power to make an EQ sexy. The new Para EQ looks like it's gotten the Chase Bliss makeover at my cousin Tammy's nail salon. Before we get started today, I want to let you know that I actually paid for this unit, so I'm not obligated to say nice things about it. But Shutik, are you implying that people would only say nice things because they're getting free stuff? Yes. Yes, I am. If any of these guys say bad things about the free stuff that they're getting, the gravy train is going to stop coming. And I've seen these guys. They love their gravy. That aside, let's talk about some EQ basics. EQs can come in a few different flavors, including graphic and parametric. Graphic EQs are a bit easier to interpret at a glance and quicker to set up. On the downside, they're less customizable. You're only able to adjust the frequency bands provided by each slider. Parametric EQs give you the ability to select specific frequencies and change the Q for each band. You'll have fewer frequencies that you can adjust at one time, but the control you have over each center frequency and Q will be far greater. Just like the name implies, the Para EQ Mach 2 is a parametric EQ. It's important to talk about when and why we would want to use an EQ in the first place. EQ shouldn't be your first choice when it comes to tone shaping. You have the tone knob on your guitar, as well as some level of EQ on most amps. You should also keep in mind that if you're recording, you can use mic placement to change your tone as well. An EQ should only be used if you have a specific intent. Don't just use one for the hell of it. It's generally accepted that a cut is better than a boost when it comes to EQ. Boosting is best used for gentle, wide shaping. When you're boosting, make sure that you're not causing competition with other instruments in the mix. Keep in mind that these are general guidelines and not rules. If something sounds good, it sounds good. Now, let's take a look at the Para EQ. The Para EQ Mach 2 comes in two different flavors. The standard version has all the features found in the Mach 1 except the input pad. It also comes in a smaller form factor. The Deluxe has a few additional features including finer control over Q. You'll also find high and low pass filters as well as low shelf and high shelf filters. I wasn't familiar with the difference between shelf and pass filters, so I googled it on yahoo.com to learn this. High and low pass filters roll off the amplitude of the signal below a cutoff point. Shelving filters roll off to a second, defined amplitude. Let's zoom and enhance on the controls. The low, mid, and high frequency knobs select the center frequency around which you'd like to boost or cut. Low, mid, and high Q selects the range of frequencies around your center frequency. All the way to the left will impact the widest range of frequencies. All the way to the right will impact the most narrow range. This can be thought of loosely as broad versus precise frequency impact. Gain is the amount of boost or cut. At noon, there is a detent where the knob will naturally stop. In this position, there is no boost or cut. These controls feel substantially cheaper than the frequency pots. This row of black knobs contains your shelf controls. My unit came with a faulty high-pass filter knob. It was making a strange woolly sound similar to a scratchy pot when adjusted. I sent that unit back for replacement. The new unit also exhibits some of this behavior. The boost knob controls the output level. You can boost up to 30 decibels. The boost is engaged with the left foot switch. Let's see what we can do with this thing. My guitar today is a Fernandez Strat with stonewall pickups in all three positions. My amp is this beautiful Chariotone 18 watt that I built with my own two hands. The Chariotone doesn't have EQ controls, so I think that makes it a good candidate to work with the pair of EQ. I call this first song Funky Butts. <laughs> For this next one, let's try to add some sparkly high end.
Last, let's try this on a DI acoustic guitar with K and K bridge plate pickups. There are two general schools of thought for EQ on a guitar. Some folks will say that if your amp sounds like garbage, you should get a new amp, and that if your pickups lack luster, you should be replacing those. They're all about addressing the root cause of your problem, and I tend to agree with these folks. The other team will say that an EQ pedal is an easy and affordable way to address a wide variety of tonal problems. From their perspective, it doesn't matter how you get to the sacred land of good tone. If it takes an EQ pedal, so be it. I'll let you decide what camp you fall into. The Perry EQ Mach 2 is definitely a high quality and transparent EQ. The boost functionality could also be very useful for clean lead work. One big drawback is that the Para doesn't have any presets. This severely limits the usefulness of this pedal in a live environment. Speaking of which, how does this even look in a live setting? I could see this being potentially useful if you have a gig with a proper sound check. You could tailor your sound to the room that you're in. On the other hand, if you have a gig where you have a limited sound check or you have to quickly set up, I think this is going to introduce more problems than it solves. You should also keep in mind that a room filled with people sounds a lot different than an empty room that you might be sound checking in. For me, I see the usefulness of this pedal in a home studio setting. You can use it to make small tweaks to make it sound better in the room you're practicing in or for your recordings. You could also reamp other instruments or vocals to the pedal and use it as an outboard effect. My final verdict on this is mixed. I think this is the best stomp box style EQ you're going to find. On the other hand, I personally don't think I need a stomp box EQ. So what about you? Do you use an EQ pedal? What are you using it for? Because now that I own one, I have no idea what to use it for. <laughs>